John Z. Nicola, thank you for coming on Guitar Tales tonight. Oh, thank you so much, David. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, we, we've spent about five minutes on our Zoom call, and I just already felt like it was gold, so we had to start recording. Oh, yes. We should have got it earlier, right? Yeah. So here's something I never thought I'd say in Guitar Tales. You are our second Academy Award winner on the show. <laughs> I never but, thought we'd even have one. Did the other one be Frankie? No. Frankie of course. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 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 But he doesn't have guitars. He did not have guitars. Yeah, no, he's not a guitarist. No, so I, you know, you were starting to just wet my whistle with what you have in there. I was complimenting you on how nice your space is there. I mean, mine is like I practice law here all day, and then I just clear all my paper out of the way so I could do this. Cool. But uh, you've got, wait, why don't you tilt your computer over? Just show us the studio you've got here. Well, there's the old, um, let me turn it on so it looks cooler. Um, oh, look at that. There's a two track, which I used to delay this, my voice signal for the big reverb that's up in the back of the barn. And that's all the hard, hardware. And, wow. you know, and then, well, let's see if we can get over here. You know, here's the console. And, and then, I don't know, can you see out in the barn? You probably can't. A little um, bit. Yeah, I can see through there a bit. That's a big old hayloft, which is where we set up the drums and such. And, little glimpse of some guitars there wow oh wait you might, you might like this too all right let's take a look oh i love that old box over there look at that girl that girl's been through a lot huh yeah that's it's an old 60s ac30 there's a watkins if you know what watkins is i do they, not they've kind of predated the marshall marshall kind of took watkins vibe and took it from there i love that that uh that pale blue cabinet there yeah that's very cool it's super very what cool. does that just have like an eight in it yes wow but it's, and, it records like a like a monster there is a, a 50 a 50 oh i don't even know that is that a princeton or champ this is a deluxe oh look at that oh, i, I, I should have real i mean the place is kind of a mess right now but that's all right weird? There's a, uh, I love this Marshall um, yeah. combo. Um, I don't even know the model of that. JMP, it's a 50 watt Marshall with 212s. You know, and if I want that chunkier sound, this is great for, you know, kind of any kind of rock, you know, Eric Clapton rock. But if you want the chunkier stuff, I have a, a sealed cabinet and I just take the output of the amp and. and right. just, uh, and then there's this. I know it's a guitar show, but we're looking at amps. This no, I love this. Yeah. Here it's silver tone. Nice. Uh, I use this is an old custom. Wait, cabinet. wait is that a bandmaster on top? It's actually a, a dual showman, which I use for bass. Oh, uh, because I used I used to own. I think I owned that for guitar because I got a cheap that one. What, that oh, the, the, the dual showman. Yeah, yeah, well, well, I know it was a, a Fender head made for bass, but I thought I had a Bandmaster. Is the Bandmaster? Would it have been a Bassman? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, Bassman. Yeah. Yeah. I have a what they call a Bassman, not the piggyback one, the the tweed one up in the up in the other side of of. Uh, I, I, maybe we could take a walk up there, only because I don't know if your listeners are familiar with an EMT reverb. No. A story behind that. It's a big it's what the first reverb they had other than a big room you know right in the early days all they did was put a mic in a room and send a signal into it bounce it around and that was your reverb this was the first you know with a real spring inside a chamber actually no this is a giant four by eight piece of metal thin metal right. and they send the signal to that and it radiates out and um and that's that was the first reverb. It so, was made in West Germany. East so, Germany. Is, so is the reverb actually using the metal as a speaker almost? It's using it as a to make the like it would if you know what a spring reverb is. Yeah. What the springs do. This is what the okay. metal is doing. You, you there's right. two. Uh, there's something that sends the signal to the to the big piece of metal. I wish I could explain it better. And then there's two microphone uh, pickups, I should say, on it that, um, you know, send it back, you know. So it's an effect, a reverb effect. But, it, you know, now they use plugins, but 
back in the day. This was the, uh, and there is a story behind this reverb. I, I maybe I'll, if we get up there, I'll tell the story. Oh yeah, uh, we we love we talk about gear a lot on the show. I mean, we talk about okay. people, we talk about gear. We love all this stuff. I got and, a bunch of things up there. You know what a clavioline is? I've heard of that. I got one of those up there too. That I I love it. Now you know, where are you? You're it's, West Coast, right? No, I'm oh. Eastern. I'm in upstate New York. Oh, okay. But if you know what a uh, if you know the song "Baby, You're a Rich Man." Yes. And you know the thing that's on the left side going sounds like sounds like a Indian like saxophone type of thing. That's a clavioline. Oh wow! And John Lennon played it with an orange, so it just goes. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, so, that's cool. So we both have barns. I have a barn too. Oh, okay, cool. Where are you? I am in Newtown, Pennsylvania. Uh, my house was built in 1740. Wow. Yeah. That's Awesome. St is it uh, like stone? Yeah, yeah. The walls um, right here. You look here. This is the thickness of the exterior oh, wall. At yes. the base, there it's about two feet thick. Um, in the basement, under my um, fireplace, it's about seven feet of stone. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Seven feet of stone. Because what it was what, so. There was an outside wall. My house was built in three different sections. Right. And I believe my, I have one of those gigantic walk-in fireplaces that the people before me turned to gas, so it doesn't do what it used to do. But right. if you look in the basement under the foundation, that was an exterior wall. And from one side of the sort of, the, you know, it goes like this. Oh. It's wider at the base, and then it narrows as it goes uh, up. But the base, feet. my arms are not, you know, wide enough to cover. Uh, I wonder why, why they did that. I wonder why. I that it, was. Stability? Maybe, I think that's overkill, maybe because it was a fireplace. I don't know. Because of the fireplace? It is now, yeah, but it was converted to get, I mean, it was then. It, it's one of those old fashioned walk in yeah. fireplaces. But you're saying the foundation, it's the a, whole, all around is seven feet at no, the top? Only no. by the fireplace. The remainder oh, okay. of the house, I would guess sense. about two feet thick. But, okay. you know, it stays cool in the summer, warm in the winter. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I guess a little bit of work, you know. Our house, I'm not in the house, I'm in the barn. The barn was built. 1830s maybe and the house is probably 1870 or 1880 but you know it's all bluestone from the quarry that was right in the back here right so you've yeah. got the hand-hewn timbers where you could actually see yeah. the well, I, can, all that. Yeah, I can show you that one if we go to the other part of the studio i can show you the hand-hewn you know uh yeah it's a it's a what do they call it a um i don't post, even know post in beam i think yes 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 I, right and I, and I have some of the supports in my barn still have the bark on them. That what? This, some of the supports in my barn still have bark. Oh, like yeah. 200 year old bark. So yeah. do I. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm not 200 years old, though. I, I'm guessing what, it's 200. I don't know. Do you know what kind of wood? Uh, you know, here, I guess they were using the hemlock and they actually wiped the hemlock out um, because they over, over um, lumbered it, basically. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what mine's made out of. Hmm. But, but, you know but Where in Pennsylvania again? Newtown. It's right over the river. You know where I am? I'm literally a stone's throw, and I'm not exaggerating, from Washington Crossing. So Washington, Washington Crossing, which is on both sides of the Delaware. So we're, we're George Cross. So, so that's South Philly then? I mean, South no, Philly? no. So it's actually, um, I'm oh. probably eight miles as the crow flies from Trenton. Jersey. Oh, Trenton. Okay. So, so north southwest, South Jersey, right? Yeah, north southwest around the middle of New Jersey. I'm directly across. From. Okay. Okay. I'm uh, I'm not so far from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh, you're eighty seven. You're eighty seven. Uh, it's seventeen. I don't know what they call. It. I think they call it eighty six now. But if you know, if you went to uh, where the woods, where Woodstock was held, in okay, Bethlehem, and then go a little bit further. West, uh, some people know Roscoe. I don't know Roscoe. Are you near Binghamton, okay. like around there? Yeah, before like an hour before Binghamton. Okay. Uh, Oneonta, south of Oneonta. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've been to those towns. One of yeah. them. I know I've been to Binghamton. Yeah. So you know what I want to do be, be, before we go further? I want to establish your street cred right now. So, okay. <laughs> so um, what's really cool? So um, we just did a show with your friend Frankie Previtt. 
Yes. And uh, we also had his uh, wife, Lisa Sherman, and we had a wonderful in-studio show. And um, your, your manager or agent got wind of it, contacted me, and I very excitedly said, hell yeah, uh, we'd love to have you on. So with our friend, um, Frankie Previtt, you wrote not one but two songs for the movie Dirty Dancing. That's correct. Um, I've had the time of my life, and it's interesting. That it's such a long title. I've noticed that if you look it up, it has... I've had in parentheses or, or whatever, what have you, and then yeah. had the time of my life. But that that won you a literal Academy Award, right? Yes, it did. That, that's crazy good, and and it's a wonderful <laughs> song at the same time. The title is uh, is I've had the time of my life, which is great because it, it makes it even more distinctive. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe Frankie mentioned this, but. Uh, I think it's number 15 most played song ever. That's, well, and, I mean, that, that's, that's a, ASCAP's 15th. I'm not, might just be ASCAP's 15th most played song ever. Whatever it is, that's an amazing statistic. And then what I read too is 60 million copies. 60 album, million. Yeah. Between and, the first album and the second album. Uh, Dirt, more dirty well it might be 60 just the first i know more dirty dancing also sold a lot and that has the time of my life on it twice as a wow. kind of theme that's you know and what's interesting you know right now what do we have like five or six hundred million people in this country when you release that we only had probably about 250 million people so when, when you look at you know and not uh, that every copy was domestic obviously but right. probably most but you know when you look at how many how many were sold in relationship to how many people yeah. were in this country? Take out people under 10 years old, let's say. Take, take right. out people who are over 80. Yeah. I, I, I dare you to find anyone over, say, 30 or 40 who hasn't heard that song. It's, it's yeah, crazy. Most of the time, uh, <clears throat> even if they don't know the movie, they, they may know the song. Uh, more, right. I don't think I've ever heard somebody go, oh, I don't know that song. Which is, uh, you know, now that I stop and think about it, is uh, a little bit mind blowing. Yeah, gotta be. And, and you know, then you've got "Hungry Eyes," and, and that's another song. Um, everyone's heard it. I mean, that that also did amazing. Wasn't it up to number three on the charts or something like that? Number four. Time of My Life is number one, and uh, "Hungry Eyes" number four. Wow. Yeah, I actually just did. Uh, I have two two records that I just. I did this record in 2019 and I did my own, it's called the why because, and I did my own versions of hungry eyes and, and actually my version of hungry eyes was number 22 on the adult contemporary billboard chart. Wow. So that chart at the time of my life, uh, time of my life is the last song on this record. And I, um, I wasn't going to do it because how are you going to do the time of my life? You know, Right. So uh, after um, finishing the whole record, I said, well, I, I guess I have to do the time of my life. And I just stripped it completely down. Right, right. Um, oh, Looking guess. for which guitar? I was. I think I put it up in the back. It's a funky old Eggman. Well, it's, it's called, a, um, it, it's made in uh, Holland. It's a 60s guitar. I wish I had it here. It's a, it's a um, um, arch top. Oh wow! And it's the funkiest sound, and it's it's unique. I, like uh, on that version, I don't think I can do it with it just any old acoustic guitar. Is it like an ES styled, or is it like the nineteen forties kind of? This is not it. This is a um, this is a this is actually just somebody lent this to me. This is a Gibson. Um, I don't even know what these are. Do you know? I don't know Gibsons too well. I don't no, but know I hear some is. picks in there. Yeah, and it's not a pick. It's Again, it's a friend's guitar. He I actually traded him for a couple of weeks. He's got my um, my um, Fender Telecaster 66. Um, he's wow. which been dying to, to play, and and he I needed this to record something recently, so we swapped guitars for a couple of weeks. But I mean, how uh, many how many um, guitars would you estimate you have? <laughs> right, right. Not have to estimate because it's I, I never counted. Uh, well, this is one, two, three. Oh, here's the guitar. It's here. This is a funky ass guitar. 
I got this at, I don't know if you're familiar, it, in the West Village, there's a place called the Music Inn. No. It's a funky, it's been there for since the 60s. It used to be the only guitar store in Manhattan uh, years ago. It's out of tune. Yeah, way out of tune. Does it have a floating bridge on it? Yes, it does. So that's got to be a challenge. Uh, you know what? This, you know, that's the beauty of old guitars. They don't need to be that precise, I guess. No, it's not that. They've had, they've had so much time to settle. Oh, okay. So, you know, like if this is from the '60s, if it hasn't been a, you know, badly tuned. Um, if it if it didn't you know if the neck was warped and and right. uh, didn't hold tune you know by now you know what I mean it's not going to do anything bad do now. You, do you worry about the bridge slipping though, or is it sort of solid where it is? I haven't had any problem. Oh, that's great. That's still out of tune, but but this is what I played. Uh, uh, you know, it has this funky pickup too, but I just mic'd it. Uh, right. The mic on here. Um, that's a cool 1950s or 40s, maybe. Uh, no, nah, um, probably 50s. Yeah, uh, maybe early 60s. Uh, it's a Royalist, which was made by e Egmond, which was uh, a Holland, um, made in Holland. And my first bass was an Egmond, really? really? Yeah, and it wasn't because I was looking for an Egmond, it's because it was $35 or something. And so, um But it, it, it's a, it's just kind of, you know what? Somebody told me this. I didn't know this. Um, the old arch tops right. uh, were, were made to cut through. They're kind of mid rangey because they yeah. were built to cut through a big band. You know what I mean? Oh, that makes sense. It's, you know, yeah. to kind of poke through with some, uh, so I never realized that. So anyway, that's, that's one of the guitars. I've got a, um, I almost want to make you wait, but I'd have to go grab it from a different part of my house. I've okay. got a, um, I have a 1942 um, acoustic that looks just like that. Oh and, yeah. And I bought it for 20, I was driving on Route 31 in Jersey and all the way across the road, there's a garage sale up on the hill and I saw it mm -hmm. and I drove up there. You saw the garage sale or you saw the guitar? The garage sale, I saw guitar to garage sale. And the guy's like, all right, I'll give it to you for 25 bucks. It needs a $500 repair. And if you get a $500 repair, it'll be worth 500 bucks. So it, it's, it's not in great shape. So I use it decoratively, but it's very, very cool. Uh -huh. Action, the strings are probably a solid half inch off the Do neck. You know, who, you know who, who's guitar, who made it? Yeah, I forgot, but it, it's written on it. Um, okay. But he told me, I think he said it was a 42. Wow. It's, yeah, maybe at some point I'll have you entertain us for about one minute and I'll go grab it while you keep the show alive. I could, uh, oh, okay. I could put you in charge of the show for a minute. We've never done that. All right. Oh, gosh, you don't want to do that. I won't know what to do. But, but, um, oh, is that, is that, that's the, no, that's not a rig. That's the gift. Is that the one you played on your video? Yep, I saw that. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. You're I, right. I was Hungry loving Eyes. that. So you saw the Hungry Eyes video then? I did. And I wanted to talk to you about that guitar. Yeah, it's, awesome we we just been recording uh with a, a well i just finished my record but a, a a couple of guys that were doing solo records that are from a band called the size that were kind of popular in the 90s right and they, they each did a, a solo record and we ended up using this guitar a lot it's just you know it's these pickups you know this is why yeah. i bought the guitar actually it's P90s, not these right these are p90s exactly as opposed to most uh tellies i mean most um Firebirds are going to have the Firebird pickup. It's like a mini. Um, oh, yeah. What? Whose guitar is that? What's that? This is my bootlegger guitar. And we've had um, Chuck Wilson on the show. Chuck Wilson, who lives in Hermosa Beach, owns bootlegger. And this is another, this is another bootlegger I have. These are also. Oh, okay. Nice. Ones, if you know, yeah. That's kind of like a, uh, well, it's kind of like a telly, right? Yeah, it's got a telly. It's got, you know, a different kind of headstock. But it's a great guitar and it's sort of a, it's sort of a semi hollow body. 
very cool guitar. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I was I noticed that in your video, the one you did during um quarantine. Yes, with the masks. Everybody had a mask. Yeah, and you we just we just asked people to film themselves with a mask on on their iPhone sideways, and then we just edited them all together. Oh, that's cool. That's, cool. that's my version of Hungry Eyes. That's the one that, yeah. I enjoyed that's that. It was very cool. And I immediately took note of that guitar. <laughs> yeah, it was very hard cool. to miss. What's that? I say it's hard to miss. Yeah, no, it's very cool. Then there's this guy. What? Is that a Gibson? A Gibson? Uh, he has uh, 175. So it's not, yeah, because it doesn't look like a 330 or whatever, 335, because it's a single cutaway, right? It's a single cutaway, right? Yeah, that's a beautiful, I like that because it's a smaller body than the ES, right? Uh, yeah, no? I, no, I think it's about the same as, uh, as, a, as a what? As, as the E, but the ES-335 is the other. 335 is skinny. Oh, right, right. Skinnier. But, but it's a wider body, isn't it, than that? This is uh yeah probably maybe and you're right it's a double uh double cutaway uh it's different this is more like uh, um L, what do they call it? l5s or whatever uh, you know it's kind of this this was a this was a um student guitar back then <laughs> yeah that's really cool unfortunately I didn't, I didn't tune all my guitars up before we started here uh, the, the last guy that was here a lot of these a lot of guys want to um tune to e flat okay and um, so these are all still tuned to E flat because we just finished the session uh, a couple of days ago. But um, all right, I got another one for you since. We're... Oh yeah, let's see. I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look, not a Rick, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, look at that! That's gorgeous. You fix Rickenbacker. Wow, that, that's a really good looking one. Yep. I love that uh, with just one F hole in it. That's a cool yeah, look. Yeah. yeah, I think that's how I think that's how most of these are now that you mention it. That's a really cool looking guitar. You know what it looks it looks like it's from the Jetsons. Looks like what? From the Jetsons. It has that, yeah. That kind yeah, of I wonder if look that guy, it. I wonder if he was inspired that way. It hasn't changed. You know that yeah. the new ones that look exactly the same. He never changed yeah. the. Uh, let me just quickly put that back. But um, yeah, as hard as we got. You know what? They all have a have a flavor. You know what I mean? That's what's that's what's amazing about them. You know. Yeah. I find uh, I sit in here and and I'm doing a part, and um, I'll try like five or six guitars, and then I you know you immediately go oh all right that's. The guitar for this part you know right now it's with just, your with your tape equipment do you still record on tape ever for variety I, uh, I haven't i haven't um started on tape although this last project i was tempted to i didn't because um i'm kind of producing and engineering right. all myself and it's like it, you know that I'm going to do that the next project. I, I just thought I was, you know, when you're doing drums, there's a lot to think about. And um, so what I've been doing is after the session, I'll run the drums through this tape machine for, and it, it you can't believe it's, you know, the difference in sound. It just adds, really? a, adds that sack, you know, really? particularly the drums. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So you're using it as a mixing board as opposed to recording. No, we're using it as a, I guess you could call it a um, a, a sonic. Uh, Enhancer maybe? Uh, yeah, that's what you yeah. would call it. You know, like a, a lot of plugins they have on these Pro Tools and everything else. Right. They'll have it. They'll have a, you know, a plugin, a, a tape machine to right. give you the emulated sound of what it, what it would sound like through the tape machine. So once it hits the magnets and the tape, something happens it's a compression there's a change in the eq and it just wow. you know, it just it's makes just like i guess it's like the difference between tubes and solid state there there's this hard to define warmth that you're gonna get right you know? right right um yeah i mean you know i guess it's 
yeah it's 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 an added listen you could probably listen to the song without it you know right. and still go hey i like that song but in, in, with mixing and recording it's all incremental you know what i mean it's all you know this sounds a little better this way and this sounds a little better that way and you put that all together and it, it all adds up you know so I, the last record i did you know we did we did it digitally but i ran almost everything through the tape machine and um it sounds like an analog recording you know and i mean all right. you know, the analog gear of course but it is it did record to pro tools but then i ran it through tape and then you know i'm using all this analog gear it's you know it sounded like i i i did record something um not so long ago with my son and his friend that we recorded on tape okay it was it was it's you definitely hear the difference although on one of the songs we actually recorded the drums and then we slowed it slowed them down and then i built tracks on top of that so it really sounds big and fat you know so will you play so obviously you're a guitarist which tells me i'm, I'm sure you're capable of playing bass are you a bassist also i'm a i'm a bassist actually more than a guitar player yeah more than a guitar although i you know i i i do what i need to do to get the song across you know right right you know and, uh, and you're comfortable behind a drum kit or no no i that's my only instrument i don't play oh all right i i've actually i did on the the why because and maybe on the new record too um the new record which i just got the, the vinyl it just came in it's still still in the plastic um it's called she said uh, i played drums on uh one song um but you know i'm i'm i record it and then I'm, i for drums i have to edit the hell out of it to make right. it sound. right but uh you know i'm i'm a keep i play uh, a lot of this record was done on um the same synth i started with my juno 106 rolling okay. juno 106, which is what i wrote originally wrote hungry eyes on you know, blah, blah, blah. that's a that's a roll in 106 all the way and and that same sound when you play the pad is what that whole song was was written on and i used it on my version um and on the new record i just started with um i don't know if you know tame impala but he, he, no. he's he's a guy named uh, kevin um oh gosh i can't think of his last name right now kevin parker and you know he's he loves that synth you know and he's a young kid but that Juno 106 six for some reason has stood the test of times and people are still using it and that's what I started at least half the songs on this record right. on that so I'm a keyboard player I've been the last two projects I've been using my organ the Hammond organ that's upstairs right, which never goes out of style never goes out of style or the Fender Rhodes comes that is the one I have to hunt down i still don't have a Rhodes. i have a Wurlitzer up there okay but i don't have a Rhodes. i gotta i have to get a Rhodes. There, there's something iconic about that yeah I, absolutely i mean it they can sometimes yeah they can sometimes you know lead you in a more jazzy way but right. where Wurlitzer is funkier and you know right. kind of you know you hear you hear Wurlitzer in a in a um you know alt country song you know but you won't you're not probably not going to hear a Rhodes on an alt country song not that i do alt country but uh, uh, you know world is you know can can be on a on a um a soul tune you know uh, i guess a fender i i gotta get a Rhodes. the bottom line is yeah i, Rhodes. <laughs> I, I feel badly i just i just cost your not, family a few bucks they're i know they're hard to find though they're not that easy to find I mean, and they don't you find them; they're expensive. When did they stop making them? I don't even know. Oh, I'm gonna less guess late '80s. Late, I mean, late '70s, maybe early. Yeah, 80s. so that's 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 a real collection. Yeah, they're 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 not. Uh, you know, somebody makes new Wurlitzers. They're not called Wurlitzer, but they're uh, clones basically, and and they're right, supposed right. to be really good. But and then um, is Hammond, do they still make them the same way? That is a good question. I. I I'm not sure of that. I really you don't, don't need know. to know. You, you own one; it doesn't matter. I own one. I don't. I, I don't need to know. But that's a good question. I, I. I don't know. I really don't know. Interesting. That's you know. It's funny with organs. That's that is uh, the Hammond organ with the Leslie. Yeah, I was speaker. just going to talk about Leslie's. Yeah. Is, um, it's classic, and it's it's like the only only organ that sounds 
exactly like that. Right. You know what I mean? You, I, I was going to ask you, the last time on this show we talked about um, the Leslie, I think was season two with Matt O'Ree. I think, was it Matt? I don't remember. It was one, it was a, we had a great guest on, I forget who it was. But he was talking about getting it working and fixing it and all that. Yeah. Do you have a Leslie? I do. Oh, look at that. And yeah. and I, I know that there's a, only because of that interview, I know there's a little to keeping them in good, solid working order. Or is yours just a workhorse? Well, I haven't had I haven't had any trouble yet, but I, I've right. only had it for a couple of years. Okay. Which I you just think to, should we take a trip up there or no? Oh yeah, go do it. Let's have it. All right. I'm going to pop up. open another beer while you uh, All right, go ahead. Us up there. I wish I had a beer here. You know, oh, I actually, I think I do up in the other get room. Get yourself a beer. I'll, I'll get you one. I have a few extra downstairs. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping it out. All right, so we're going into the. Uh... Oh, I like your barn. Yeah, this is uh, goes up, up a ways. So th this is really great for drums because there's, you know, that's just. Uh, it's not insulated, you know what I mean? So I was going to ask that. Yes. Um, the sound ex escapes and um, you know the fact that you know it's wood all around, nothing is flat, nothing all right. Your reflections, a lot of de de deflection, which um are you have, those are modern stairs you've got in there. Somebody there. just built these for the stairs for me because we this room was was uninsulated. Um, but we just insulated it. So uh, oh that look, that looks modern that room. I didn't know we were gonna uh, tour. I would have cleaned up a little bit. Oh, I like it better like this. Oh look at that. Um, here's a world up there, more guitars, of course. There's a few guitars there. Yeah. Uh, here's this is one I use a lot, even though it's a oh I like that. That's an old silver tone. This is Silver tones were what you'd buy at Sears. I was just going to say, I was going to ask if those were the old Sears guitars, as were the amps. I oh. thought so. Yeah. Oh, that's a great sound. Yeah. Let's see. So where's your Leslie? Is your Leslie up there? There's a Leslie. Look at that thing. Look at that right. workhorse. Let me start her up. Let me let's see if this is a good, I don't know what you can see there. Well, let's see, we get the Leslie, you can see that going. Plug it in. Come on. So with a Leslie, I mean with an organ, I can't do it because I've got to do it with two hands. Right. You have to um, Hold this one start button for eight seconds. Oh, look at that. And then you put the on, on button on, and this guy starts spinning. Is it spinning now? Uh, oh, yeah, I can see it a little bit. It looks like it see some kind of. I have to hold it for eight seconds, and then it should be OK. There's the, the base. Leslie doing it, working his magic, yeah. Oh, listen to that. Then you flick this button right here. Right. And Leslie starts spinning faster. I, I just googled something to make sure I didn't screw up the title. That you just brought me to lighter shade of pale. Like it, it, it really just made me think of that song. That yeah, yeah. Well, I, I kind of use that sound a lot. Uh, I God, I forgot it now. Uh, uh. Yeah, there we go.
something like that. There we go. Like That's I a said, great room. Uh, and I'm yeah, jealous that you're insulated. This used to be um, just a, a little, you know, uninsulated room. And then, um, here, this is kind of fun too. They put the old, oh, you can't really see. Well, maybe if I shut this off. The old, this this was like an addition in, in like the 1900s. I feel now we're on a um, episode of Ghostbusters right now. Someone's about to like, you're going to hear a noise off in the corner. Well, you could be some bats up there. I don't know if you can see the old roof. Are you, are you seeing that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, that's the old roof. And then the, this part of the of the barn was built in 1911. Okay. But, uh, but then I just finished this room off recently. I'm going to get my beer over here. This this thing was out by the pool, but uh, I brought it in because that's another uninsulated <laughs> room. Yeah. All right, can we drink? Right, cheers. Yeah. Let's do a cheers. All right, cheers. Clink. Cheers. Oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> That's enough to get in my hand. <laughs> right, what are you drinking there? This is made up here in Livingston Manor. Upward Brewing Company. Yeah, that's a good looking beer. I've got Central Mountains. I've got Log Yard Brewing that I got in Williamsport, PA. I just finished a Guinness before that. Is it um, from the area? I think so. I think so. Not sure. All right. was, this, one, this one is really cool. Let's see here. Oh, look at that. What the hell lamp is that? This is a clavulene. It's a good looking amp. Let me get my chair. Now, as I said earlier, you put your, you put your knee. Oh, oh my God! Where is that thing? Hold on a second. So you're like you could be like Getty Lee playing ten things at once. Well, here it is. There's a little thing down here. Right. Knee on, but I'll just hold. It. Oh, let me get this. Is it's it almost cool. like a whammy bar type thing? It's volume. Okay. You can do a volume oh, swell. Oh, that's cool. That's like the orange, yeah. Yeah. Exactly have the right sound right now, but it's just you know kind of. I love this. This is fantastic. First, like synthesizer. You know what other song it's on is um um. One of the ventures, like this one's made some work. It's um, it only plays one note at once, and that's how it, you know, so that's how you can play it with this because it'll shut off the last note as soon as you right. go to the new one. Here's an old glitch. Uh, what's, it, what's that little lamp you have there? Like that suitcase looking amp? That's right there. What, that's what makes the sound on uh, for the clavulin. It it actually I don't even understand it. It somehow the sound comes from the tubes. Really? Uh, I never really. I have to. I, I have no way of explaining it. But it's the handle it's, looks ancient. Look at that. The handle is even yeah. sheared well, off. From, a little bit. This, yeah. from, this thing is from the fifties. Wow! Look at that. First, First, I guess you'd call it the first kind of synthesizer. You know? Yeah. And that's that can't be an original speaker, though. You have to have replaced the speaker in there, right? No, no. It's, it's the original. The, it's original. Really? Even the code? Oh, as far as I know. I don't know. That... I bought it from someone. As far as I know, it is. I, I bought it from someone, so I don't really know. Yeah. So I've had I've had speaker cones that are 20 years old and just sort of disintegrate over time. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't, you know, maybe you're right. I, I never, it looks I like. Know. I guess they could have um, reconned it. Yeah, yeah. possible. Yeah. You know, but the guy, I doubt it. I got it from some guy in Binghamton, of all places, whose grandmother had it. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Or, or not. Or, or, you know, there was a time when she was, there's probably a time in her life when she was young. I'm going to oh, just stick my neck out and, and suggest that maybe she was once young. 
There's a. Uh, Ooh. A K. Uh, what's that? Harmony. Um, Look at harmony. that. It's like a like a K too, though. This yeah. is kind of a, a iconic favorite uh, through the years. It's some some uh, some guys swear by this still. This kind this bass in it. Uh, I um actually went and saw it. My friend actually does front of house for the David Byrne show on okay. Broadway. And that guy in that show was using one of those. It's very, I like how simple it is. You know? Yeah, well, it, it was a cheap, you know, it was cheap bass at the time. Army, yeah, they're not, a, that's not a fancy company at all. No, uh, no, they were, they were like, uh, you know, they were, Gibson and Fender were doing their thing. These guys were, were uh, probably a tenth of the price. Yeah. Even back yeah. then, you know, they, these were the cheap guitars, you know, but. Uh they were made well there was yep. something about them that you know that that um you know that just sound great they still sound great you know i had a couple of tiscos over the years you ever have a tisco oh was, yeah yes yes i actually i have one i have one in this in my city studio I always right. call i always said tisco but you might be right well, be no right. i no i'm going to defer to you on that i have no idea yeah i, I, I could be, could be Tisco. I, I got one. I don't have it anymore, but I got one on eBay a handful of years ago, and yeah. the ad said it's so solid that you can use it to hammer in a fence post in winter. <laughs> and I just that 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 line just stuck with me. It probably I, did too. Yeah, and now they're finally worth money. I mean, my first one of my first guitars was a four pickup, twelve string semi acoustic Tisco or Tisco. That my local music guy sold me for twenty eight dollars. Yeah, wow. Something like that, uh, with a floating bridge. It was just a crazy looking guitar. A friend of mine, Pat Ir Pat Irwin, who played with the B fifty twos and does a lot of. Um, in fact, I think he just did the new Dexter show. Dexter, whatever the new Dexter show yeah, is. There's something they're advertising now. He, so. was, uh, he does the you know the music for it and he has a collection of those tyscos he has the more pickups the better like four pickup tyscos and now oh, they were so over the top i mean mine yeah, was yeah. ridiculous yeah yeah and i was i had zero weeks let alone months of experience on guitar so eventually i turned it into a six string because i i never learned how to tune a 12 string so oh, i used, 12 string oh yeah, yeah it, was, it was a 12 string four pickup Semi hollow body, oh, like wow. it was just completely over the top. That's very cool. shiny. Yeah, and, and it was it was like they were just trying to do, I guess, like the um, the, the surf oh. scene kind of thing, right? Right, right. Well, uh, there a lot of those guitars were in that stuff. They were made out of Chicago, I believe, and those Chicago oh, really? were a great. They were a great sound. That, that I, that's what's in that bass. Oh. I should you. I forget what they're called, but they're. Um, <laughs> There's names for them. Um, uh, they're cheap pickups, you know, because they were trying to make it inexpensive, but yeah. they sounded awesome. They have a very unique sound. Yeah, yeah. it's very cool. I remember, so, um, let's see what okay. else you got here. No, you got oh, all right. Well, go ahead, finish your story. You remember uh, what? I, another cheap guitar. This is all like high school stuff, right? Right. Same music store, Bernadine's Music in Matawan, New Jersey. I got a Fender Coronado for 20 oh that's a cool guitar that's a semi hollow right yes it was and that was like the edsel offender just it never worked for them but it was oh, a gorgeous okay. guitar and yeah. i remember when i was ready to upgrade because i never could keep a guitar i never had the money for that so i i sold it you know through the one ads or something some guy offers me 120 for it and i said i can't take 120 from you because i only paid 25 oh. so i made him only pay me 100 for it I remember oh, these crazy things. That's a that guitar thing. today, I mean, oh. 68 or whatever it was. Well, if it was a 68 or was it 66 or 65? That I won't know. I just know 60s. Okay, because 67, well, it probably still had the old parts. You know, the CBS took over. No, they were, they were, they were they 70, were Yes. No, well, it was like 68. But oh, they were right. still using parts, maybe 67, 68. Oh, I didn't they were still using the old parts. And, you know, so a lot of those crossover guitars are still great. I, um, I bought a, a, a 72 bass, my first bass for $195. And 
um, you know, that was just post the pre, you know, the, the, when CVS just bought it, it was still great. That's still worth 4,000 bucks now, but yeah, but, but it's, pre -CVS, uh, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Whole different thing. So let me ask you this question. Yeah. I, I something just silly just occurred to me. Yeah. I, I feel like you and I are talking about those guitars with the same degree of romance and reverence you might talk about your first girlfriend about. Right? Like, you know, like I you remember $195 or $194. You remember yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Yeah. You know, no, it's true. It's very uh and you know, when you turn a, a tube amp on, yeah. even the smell yes. it brings yeah. you right yeah. back to being 12 years old yeah 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 well i surround myself with all that this is a this is a reverb oh my god look at that thing there's a big sheet of metal in here and so it's um, a, a wooden wooden oh, no. enclosure inside is a sheet of metal this is what you turn to, to for the delay like um this will be a tight reverb like one second like right you know, and then all the way up to five seconds be a really long reverb you know that 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 control panel looks like it's from the set of like my favorite martian or something i know well you see that it says made in west germany that's so oh, interesting yep so this is probably in the 50s and like i said this is a a, a reverb and it's um you send a, a guitar or a vocal into it it hits the reverb and you you add that into the to the vocal sound you you right. you have a a volume for the just the reverb and you just add it and it just sounds you know it gives it some depth gives your vocal some depth this reverb i bought not so long ago um and i bought it knowing it, that lamont dozier and brian holland if you know holland dozier holland they're uh, Motown writers. Okay. So I knew it came from uh, an old Motown studio, but I knew I was dealing with somebody in New Jersey. So when they, so the, just that alone, I mean, it, so it's probably on a bunch of big Motown yeah. hits. Right. And then, then it gets here and I hired some piano movers to bring it here. And they, um, they, um, they said, "Yeah, we, you know, we." They picked it up in in New Jersey, and he said, "We, uh, the guy we we got it from, had a bunch of um, Gladys Knight and the Pips gold records on the wall, right?" And I oh said, my God. "Wow, that's got to be, that's got to be Tony Camillo." So I I I research a little bit, and I Tony Camillo, my my mentor as a engineer producer is a guy named Ed Stasium who did a bunch of the Ramones and a bunch of other stuff. And okay. actually Frankie introduced me to him. Um, he worked with Tony Camillo and he knows this, he remembers this reverb. Uh, and so that's one connection. He even sent me, uh, when we get back to the other room, I'll show you the wrench that he had for 40 years. He had that wrench that, that goes on these um, bolts here. Um, oh, and he sent, it, he sent it to me, but then, long story short, when we did the demo for the time of my life, we did it at Tony Camillo's studio. Oh wow! So the reverb was on the demo for the time of my life. Oh and my so god! All these years later, I I ended up luckily ended up with it. So I love it. I I use it um, during mix down. I put it on the, the vocals, and it just uh, you know it just gives another depth that you're not going to get from a plug-in no yeah that, that's amazing you, you know just while we're on memory lane i found the connection i think to one of our um, other guitar tales guests so you were you have worked with brian delaney oh i love brian so, yeah so, so he i saw on the write-up he's been with the new york dolls right yep. and, and we had steve conti who, oh uh, yeah I know. I know steve i figured you would so yeah, in uh, fact we both <laughs> had a record release on november 5th just right recently. yeah we just we just dropped a show with steve and we we were able to get his show out um just the, i think either the day before or the day of his album release oh, okay cool yeah. i i didn't know i didn't know steve in high school but he graduated from my high school oh wow yeah my same high school 
Would he be he's, your age or a little bit older? Just or? a couple years older. Yeah. But strangely, he looks 15 years younger. Uh, <laughs> maybe not strangely. That's um, like rock and roll blood. Yeah, yeah. But I, I noticed when I was going through, I love all these connections we get. Yeah, Brian. Brian, Brian plays on both my records, actually. Um, I, actually, almost every record I've done on my record label, OMAD, I have a record label, OMAD, O-M-A-D Records, right. OMADRecords.com. And um, <clears throat> Brian, it's always, he's like, other than my son who plays on some things, um, Brian is my my guitarist for sure. I mean, my drummer. Right. Just amazing. I love the way he plays. That's fantastic. Now, now one more connection, and then I want to start talking about your album, This Is Why, right. Because. Which, which I want to help people find their way to it. So, Kara's Flowers. Yes. What, what's the backstory there? Let's let's hear about that. Okay, they were uh, youngsters at the time, and I was working with um, a guy named Tommy Allen, and uh, he we were in a band together, and we were producing <laughs> bands together. We had a label. In fact, he's. He, we had a production company. It was actually Old Mad Productions. We were in a band called o Ordinary Madness, and that got shortened. That's a cool name. Well, that's from that's from Charles Bukowski, but it um the, the poet. But um we sh I shortened. Does he like write books or something? Oh yeah, he writes books. He writes. I don't, uh, I don't read. He writes books, and uh, he's known as a poet, but he also writes books, prose, uh -huh. I guess, and um. Uh, we uh, we had a band called uh, Ordinary Madness, and we shortened the production company to Mad Productions. And to uh, Tommy moved out to the West Coast, so he's living in Malibu, and he was walking on the beach, and he heard this band. And um, Tommy's a real lover of that, um, you know, Raspberries, Beach Boys, that that kind of vibe. And he heard this band, right. and he he went over to the they were playing in a garage, and he said, you know, who are you guys? They were only like 16 years old at the time. Oh, wow. And um, we uh, we actually signed them to our production company and and did a record with them uh, as Kara's Flowers. We we um, we went in and, and did the whole record and then um, what happened? Then we we kind of they kind of got we kind of brought them to a, a place and then they kind of got swiped from us in a way. Oh, that's not cool. And um, but I mean we had points on their record that they did for reprise. Uh, and actually they released some of the recordings we did with them. And um, uh, and then they went on to become, they, they broke up and then they reformed as Maroon 5. They added a fifth guy and as, as Maroon 5. And actually not, uh, recent, not so long ago when Adam was on, uh, Adam Levine was on uh, The Voice, you yeah. know, they asked each, each uh, of the, um, um, of the judges, what was their chair turnaround moment like for them? And right. Adam gave a shout out to Tommy Allen and myself and said that we were the first ones to <laughs> to um, kind of recognize and and turn a chair around for them. You know, we did a great oh. record. Actually, we did it. We did a we did a the first day to feel each other out to see if we liked. We did like four songs. And it is the funkiest sounding. I love it. It's just, <clears throat> just really wild sounding. I, I like that band. You know, they, I, I, my taste goes a little more rock than them, but you know, they're they're fantastic. I vaguely remember seeing them in Trenton once. Not hardly. Hmm. Well, they're not an old band, so it can't be that long ago. Uh, wait, what were they opening for somebody else or something? No, they were they were a headliner at that point. I think I saw oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. As yeah. as Maroon Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not exactly. What, it, it, he's he's just off the charts talented. So no, that, we knew that. that. We knew that at the time. We were like, yeah, this. You know, they were all talented. I'm still with. I'm still see Mickey, the bass player. Um, in fact, Mickey plays bass on my record on one song. Um, he wanted. Uh, I asked him if he wanted to play, and I, and it, he happens to be a big fan of um, Procol Harum, yep. the band Procol Harum, and so. <laughs> This is a song I wrote with John Waite and Keith Reed okay. from Local Harem. And so when he heard, so he, he wanted to play bass on it. So, he, and he did a great job actually. That's fantastic. Uh, 
Well, let me ask you this. So your new album is, if I have it right, because you've done a lot of projects, this is why, because, right? That's the new album, right? No, that's the, that's not 2019. Okay. Okay. Because so that's the one that has uh, a lot of songs that I wrote. I wrote like, you know, the time of my life, hungry eyes. And then the other songs I wrote for other people like, John Waite and uh, a couple other things that were in in a in one was in a Sylvester Stallone movie. But these are my versions of my songs that I wrote. Compilation, right? Other, well, it, but it's my versions. It's not that's the, so cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So, I, so basically, I adapted songs that I knew that I could do for this record. This record is the new one. It's called "She Said." I'll open it. Um, it's called She Said, and um, that's actually my wife from when she was a model many, many years ago. But um, this record was, I, I did during, um, during lockdown, said. basically, and it's, it, she said, yes, and it's, um, it's songs I wrote for the first time for myself. You know, these were written for this record for me, which is the first time I ever you know that's a great picture by well, the way. I, who's that dude in the picture what, this in one here yeah who's that dude Hold on. i'm sorry who's that dude in the picture that's me i know okay. that's me with before my hair <laughs> this is pre -COVID. No, this, this was pre well covid had just started but i had i had short hair then and then my hair grew <laughs> grew because yeah. but uh and that's in the milk house from the barn that, that's a great shot that's a really great shot. Now, which amp is that in front of you in that picture? That's that Watkins, that blue Watkins you saw. Yeah, there. that's very yeah. cool. Oh, and then there's this. I saw um, Mr. Daisy vinyl. Look at that. And there's also another picture of my wife. That, oh, know, that's great. What a beautiful that's picture. picture. Yeah, this was um, actually a famous photographer. Um, the name is escaping me right now, but. Uh, that was before I knew her, actually. But uh, and and so was so was. Oh, this is cool. This, uh, you don't see this too often. You know the the jacket where you put the oh, on the inside. I love that. Yeah, I love it too. It's it's it kind doesn't of a, fall out. It's kind right. of a modified gatefold. You know. Yeah. There, I, I you don't see too many albums like this. Um, no. I know. Um, it was a Buddy Miles record, I remember, from the 60s that was like this. There was an Al Cooper record like this. I don't even know what it's called. I've uh, had a few albums that, that open. I, I'll have to what? take a look downstairs and see what I have. Right, but but I a lot of them are gatefold. So there's, see how this is just, it's thin. It's not double like this. Right. Whoop. I gotta get to the camera. No, I can see, you can see the difference in yeah, right. absolutely that show. The regular gatefold is, goes like this too, but the album comes out here, right? Now, where do people get it? How are people gonna find you and find the album? Well, I guess the quickest thing is OMAD Records, O M A D Records dot com. Um, you know, but it's in the system. So I mean, you know, if you if you had to go to Amazon or, or something like that, it Am <laughs> Yeah, I wish. Um, or, or, you know, Spotify, but here I'm going to give my spiel. Yeah. If, if you want to support any artist, it doesn't have to be me, any artist that you like, try and buy a, a CD, an LP, or even a digital download. Right. Streaming, streaming is, is a dead end for artists. You, can, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll get 13 million streams in a quarter. And that's a, a lot because of Dirty Dancing and all that. Yeah, and I'll get yeah. like $250 for 13 wow, million streams. Wow. So like a band who's new and, you know, excited about getting 200,000 streams, that's a good amount of streams. That's, what is it, five bucks? I mean, that you can't, wow. you can't, you know, whereas a, if you digital download from, say, iTunes, which is a little hard to do now, you have, it's hard to find, but you can do it. You know, uh, you'll buy it for $9.99. The artist is getting... 60 percent of that you know so right. they get six seven dollars <clears throat> you know well, there's yeah, no I, way you and, can't survive and, on streaming and and, and i'll tell it's you from a, it's not a i don't see that it can last forever right because it's it, it eventually who's going to do it why would you know the old stuff yeah they can keep it going but what new artist is you can't you can't 
you can't live on that. So no. how, are you, how are you gonna do and, it? And there's there's another side to the pitch that I love. So I um, my daughter who I'm thrilled without me pushing hard is now a Stones fan who's nineteen. Mm-hmm. My daughter is twenty one, and she's sort of my gentle pushing has gotten her in the direction I like. So the other day I sent her Shambhala by Three Dog Night, and sure. she, she loved it. And I'm going next this weekend. I'll probably she's going to be home for Thanksgiving. I'm going to give her my original 45 of that. Oh wow! You know, so the selfish pitch is to say to people, buy the buy the vinyl. Because that that tactile, absolutely. Nice feeling, you know, yeah. and, and, how, and how does it feel when you drop that needle? You can actually feel the electricity. You know what I mean? You yeah. feel it dropping the needle, and you and then you yeah. hear it over there, and it's. Yeah, Nothing and, and I felt guilty because I've got a dead end turn table and I feel like that's too new. You know, like I could feel like I should have something even older. You know, well, you know I, I um I, I've done a lot of research in that. I, I was buying a lot of um not as far as the turntable, but as far as amplifiers, I was buying some single ended amps, which are, are are like one tube and one output, and you need very efficient speakers for that. And yeah, it's a great sound. Then recently, I went. I went not far in Binghamton. They've been making Macintosh stereo equipment. Really? That's, that's where it's from, Binghamton. Hmm. I'm not talking about the computer Macintosh. I'm talking about. Oh, I remember those. M- yeah. M C I N T O S H. No, I remember. They're like just like clip um, speakers are inefficient but great, right? And then they're, you have- they're, they're are efficient. A I lot of clips are only like eighty nine. No, I think, well, it depends. But the old Klipsch horns are like 96, 98. Oh, they are? Then I have it completely wrong. There was, I thought Klipsch was wonderful but inefficient, but maybe not. All right. I'm sure they make those too, but I I, I, I believe they're known for the efficient. So how's this? I got it completely, I got it completely wrong and backwards. Well, there's a Uh, I could be wrong. I I did buy, I bought a 60s. Finally bought myself. I went to this place called Audio Classics in Binghamton. And they're kind of like a repair shop for Macintosh. Yeah. Uh, but they sell. Uh, I bought a, the the classic tube amp with a classic, I forget the model number. It's um, a, a 25 or is it a 40? Um, something 40. But, you know, it's the classic look and it's a stereo it's not a mono block. It's it's a stereo right. uh, amp, and then the MX one hundred and ten um, receiver and preamp. So a separate. And, wow. All right. And, and let me tell you something. You just, I, 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 I believe that the kind of the pinnacle of sonic recording and playback is probably the early 60s before it went solid state yeah yeah my my dad was not even into music he's still around but not that into music and not an audiophile he had a bogan and oh, it was sure. a tube preamp a tube amp yeah and i was in love with that you know yeah, they didn't even have pet, there was no enclosure it just sat there in our little you know whatever bookshelf you yeah. had the bass and you could see the tubes and it was a separate preamp and amp. <laughs> and I remember way back in the 70s when I was a kid, I looked it up and Bogan was the shit. You know, like Bogan yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, and, absolutely. And he didn't know that. He just bought a stereo, you know. Well, because that's what they were selling then. You know, yeah. everything they sold was pretty good. If you look at even, uh, I have a thing and I, I was working on it with somebody, but unfortunately, uh, Carl passed away, but oh. we were, you know, the um, in oh. the 60s, you bought a, 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 there was the console stereo, but there was also one you put on your, on your, uh, you know, um, cupboard or something. It was about, you know, maybe this big, you know, um, Crossley makes a version of it, but they're horrific. Okay. Back in the day, they had these little tiny tube amps in, you know, little single ended tube amps with yeah. a turntable is all in one speakers oh really oh yeah and uh if you could make a modern version of that i, I think uh, people would really dig it but basically anything you bought in the 60s was tubes 
early 60s and it's gonna sound good yeah it's true it's true i love all that stuff and then there was a company i think i bought a used one once what was the company where they always they came in kits not carbon carbon was an amp carbon was a guitar amp company there was a company that you would buy a tube kit oh he did yes he yeah yeah, yeah. He kit. Sure. i never yeah. bought a heat kit new but over, I don't remember what it was, but I had over the years, I had a, a someone else had put it together, but right. I had a heat kit um, amp at some yeah. point. Yeah, a guitar amp or a stereo amp? Stereo, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I- Yep, that's, that's the heyday. Yeah, so I, this is, my favorite shows are when it feels like 10 minutes. I'm looking yeah. at my clock now, we've been chatting over an hour. Oh boy, well- And I love it. Um, don't get me started on equipment, you know. It's I love my one of my favorite things is to talk about gear. Hear that? See that little thing with the red? The yes. Bottom? Yeah. That yeah. those are called uh, Telefunken V72s. That's what like the Beetle Beetles were, you know, back in the day, early Beetles. That's that was a preamp that they used. The thing up here, the UTA Unfair Child. Can you see that? Yes. That is a kind of a new version of what they call a Fairchild compressor. And if anything was responsible for the Beatles sound or, you know, that crash you hear that Ringo does. Right. That's responsible. The, the Fairchild, Fairchild compressor, um, just some more stuff. All tubes. That's all tubes. That's loaded with yeah. tubes. Yeah, I, I, I got... Um... I haven't had a tube amp since, I guess, would, would my bass master have been a tube amp? That would have been a tube amp, right? Uh, bass master? Yeah, I guess so. I'm not Probably. sure. But I got I got a bootlegger, because Chuck Wilson and this company, that won't fall, hopefully. And that's um, a, a solid state amp? Is it a, no, it's is a it... tube. So, oh, okay. And I just, you know, I, I'm, I, I, this is my avocation instead of my um, career, so I, I never indulged until I started the show, and, and Chuck was kind that I'm. He was kind enough to send me a wonderful bootlegger tube band. There, nice. There's just no, there's no uh, difference. Can we see it or no? Yeah, no. I'd have to go. I'd have to go two stories down from where I am oh, now. Okay, all right. But but they, he makes just an old school tube band. And it's cool. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Like even like my Fender Champ I had was the crappy Salton State version, not the good kind. You know. Oh. Mm. Yeah, and that, so um, I think the last tube amp I had was probably 20, 30 years ago, which was oh, wow. uh, my Got Fender. Oh, well, you have one now. You have now that. I have one. So now, now, now life is in balance. But <laughs> no, no <laughs> I mean to me that you know, it, it's funny because uh, I used to balk at the there was a Vox made a um, a solid state that the Beatles were actually using. They after you know they they started with the tube amps and then yeah. they made it. And I, I didn't realize that those sounded good. I, I actually passed on one because it was solid state, but somebody tells me that they were they had a unique sound. Yeah, I mean, I had at this point, God, thirty five years ago, I had a Sun Solid State. Oh, a Solid State! Wow, Sun Solid State was a wow. one twelve that I swapped out their speaker. I put an EV in there. I have no musical history. It's a, I've said this before. You don't know this yet. I'm a shitty guitar player, but I just love this stuff. But my yeah. college band played um, outdoors, uh, you know, two, 3,000 people, outdoor concert, and they couldn't mic me. I had my volume on two, and I filled an outdoor show with my son's solid state oh, 112. Wow. Yeah, of course, yeah. So it was a, it was a cool little land. You know, so, you know, the, uh, you know the story of um, Leslie West, right? As far as two uh, sun amps go, no, no. Well, he was getting ready to play the Fillmore. Right. I'm going to paraphrase this whole thing because I don't know it inside and out. But they sent him, you know, they sent him a sun amps tube, not not uh, the real sun. Yeah, yeah, not the whole real sun. sun. And um, uh, they sent him the wrong amp. They sent him uh, um, PA public announcement amp instead of a. So just a PA system, not an amp. Right. right. Yeah. Well, it was an amp, but it was for a PA system. Yeah. And they had no choice. They were getting ready to play the Fillmore. 
So he just used that, and and that's part of his unique sound with that Les Paul Jr. Of course, oh. but it was it was a it was a PA amp that uh, was never meant for guitars necessarily. Oh, that's interesting. That's very cool. Leslie oh. got a great what a great sound. He great he tone. And he just passed very recently. I know. He did. Yeah. He was wonderful. Yeah. So I'm going to thank you. This is all right. I could do. I mean, yeah, I, I know. There are guests I could do five hours with you, but when I had Frankie and Lisa on, I could have done five hours each on them. I could do, I'm, you only I'm get sure. one five hour. I'm only giving you one five hour. Right. <laughs> Lisa, this is wonderful. Lisa is wonderful, and, but not but, but and she can, she's, she can speak. There's no. Um, oh, she, she was a great guest. <laughs> yeah, she's you, great. You should, I'll, 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 I'll email you um, the show we when, did because we dropped it a few days ago. Um, she belted out a song in our studio. Oh my god! Oh, fantastic! Yeah, when, cool. when if, if you ever want to come to our studio sometime, we're in okay. Central Jersey. Um, but yeah, she belted out a song. She was amazing. Wow, uh, so, yeah, she's great. Quite a talent. And Frankie, of course, uh, I've known Frankie for thirty years, probably. Yeah, they're they're both wonderful. So I'm gonna. Her, so her song oh, we wrote together was "Hungry Eyes." Wow! Wow! So O M A D Records. Dot com, right? Did I get it right? Yes. Because I'm looking, I'm looking at my crappy handwriting. It almost says DMAD records because my handwriting. I, I, I've got a lawyer's handwriting. All right. Okay. Oh, oh, mad. Think oh, of mad. Ordinary, ordinary madness. Oh, mad. Oh, love dot it. Com. Oh, mad oh, mad records. Records. Oh, yeah. Buy the vinyl. Buy that the would vinyl. Be wonderful. I would appreciate it, of course. Yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I, I I can't. I, I think people could look at my face and see how much fun I had. But uh, I hope. <laughs> well, me you too. I, you know, I love gear, so yeah. I can talk about it all day. Yeah, me too. All right. Have a great night. Okay. See you. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye.